This lesson is for advanced algebra 2-4, the graph of y equals kx. That line is a line that contains the origin, which is the coordinate 0, 0, and has a slope of k. Slope is our main focus today, so there's quite a few pieces of notes here for students to take note of. The slope is typically described as the rise over the run. The rise, think about rising in the morning, you get up, and when you run, you typically run across or horizontally. So it's vertical over horizontal. Mathematically, you'll calculate it using two coordinates. You'll take the y values and subtract, the x values and subtract, and then divide the results. It's important for students to keep in mind which direction you're going when you're doing slope or rate of change. The top number, if it's positive, means you'll move up. Top number, if it's negative, means you'll move down. On the bottom of the slope, the positive number will mean you're moving to the right, which is abbreviated here, RT. If it's a negative number on the bottom, you'll move to the left. Keep in mind that there is a difference between negative 2 thirds, negative 2 over 3, negative 3 under 2, and negative 2 over negative 3. Only three of those four are equal to each other. Only when there's a single negative, either on the top or the bottom or in front of the fraction, do you get a negative slope. When you have a negative slope in front of the number, it's important that you don't put the negative with both the top and the bottom. A negative slope simply means it will go down from left to right. Always make sure you read your graphs from left to right so that we're all saying which way the slope is going in the correct format. If you end up with a slope of a fraction like 1 fifth, it either means you'll go up 1 and over 5, or up 1 and over a fifth. Excuse me, up a fifth and over 1. So it's important that students know which way they're going when they do slope and to calculate it correctly. When you're working with a graph of y equals kx, know that the slope of the line will be consistent. If you're working with a graph that's got many different slopes, we refer to those as rates of change. So it's important for students to be able to recognize which graph has more of a steeper slope. So in this first example, example A, we've got 2x and 3x. Which one will be more steep? If you're not sure, you can go ahead and graph those two on your graphing calculator and you'll see that the one with the higher slope is going to be more steep. So you want to analyze the slope. And remember that that slope is the number next to the x. And the highest one is going to be the one that's more steep. What gets tricky for students is when they have to compare fractions. So it's important here to recognize which fraction is the greater fraction, which one is larger. If you think about dividing something into half or dividing something into thirds, the division of the half will be larger. So the half actually has more steep of a slope. You'll go up 1 over 2, which will be more steep than going up 1 over 3. When you're comparing whole numbers and fractions, hopefully that's very clear that the bigger slope here is obviously going to be the whole number. There's more questions similar to that in the homework for students to practice. Students also need to be able to recognize slope when it's involved in a word problem. Let's look at this one. Percents are used to measure steepness or the grade of a road. A 2% grade means that for every 100 feet of horizontal distance, the road will rise 2 feet. Find the grade of a road that rises 50 feet in a horizontal distance of 2,000 feet. First, let's draw a picture of the information that they give us. For every thousand feet, excuse me, hundred feet that you're going across, the road will rise two feet. Please excuse the fact that my drawing here is definitely not accurate to scale. So the percent is going to be indicated right here in terms of how slanted our line or our road would be. So this would be indicated by 2%. The 2% came from us doing the rise over the run, because that's how you calculate slope. So if you do the rise, which was 2, over the run, which was 100, you divide that, you will get 0 0.02, which is the same as 2%. So it's 
So we're going to utilize that same type of thinking to answer the question. So let's draw our road with the rise and figure out the grade or the percentage. So the road rises 50 feet, so that's going to be the vertical component. And then it will have a horizontal distance of 2,000 feet. So we want to go ahead and do the division here, rise over run, 50 divided by 2,000, and that will tell us the percent of grade of the road. When you divide that out, I believe you get 2.5%. It'll be 0 0.025, when you turn that into a percent, it's 2.5%. So this one would actually be more steep than the one that they gave us originally. The last thing I want to mention here in the video is just a little bit of help for students on graphing on the Inspire. When you start a new graph page or a new tab, you can either do a new document or you can hit Control i to start a new tab. You want to choose a graph page. And at the bottom you'll see F and then a number and then X. The number here is irrelevant and then students need to type in their equation. Regardless of what the variable is that you're working with, the calculator always graphs for x. So if you're working with a function that says f of t, for example, and we want you to graph t squared, you would always type it in as x squared instead. The calculator will not recognize any other variable other than x. If you need to graph more than one function at a time, you'll have to hit the tab key so that you can enter more functions. So there are some situations in this lesson that ask students to graph. So let's do a few of those together. I'm going to pull up my calculator here. I already started a new graph page. And I'm going to type in 4x and have the calculator graph that for me. And so I can see my first function is there. Now to get an additional function to be graphed, I simply hit the tab button. And now I'm going to type in 1 fourth x. A reminder to students to get the fraction button, you hit control and then divide. So hit 1 to maneuver to the bottom. You can use your arrows on your touchpad or you can hit tab. And I'm going to say 4. I'm going to use my arrow here to get away from the fraction. And I'm going to hit X. And then enter when I'm done. And so if I was trying to determine between the two which one was more steep, they are labeled here so I can see that the first function is this one second one is here, so the one that's more steep is clearly the first. If you need to change the window in any way, you would go to Menu, Window, Window Settings. In this window, you may change the X minimum and the X maximum. Those will be affected by your domain. It will allow you to go further to the left of the graph and further to the right. Skipping down to the Y min and the Y max, those will allow you to see more of the graph up above for the Y max and more of the graph, graph below for the Y min. So if we were to change those values, it would modify the look of the graph. So let's go back to our notes. So just again to help students a little bit further with their graphing issues, your domain will be affected in the window settings by x min and x max, the range by y min and y max. Finally, when students are required to talk about their graph in terms of the different quadrants that it's located in, just a quick reminder here that the quadrants start with quadrant 1 and rotate counterclockwise to quadrant 4.